My name is Mary Ellen Resendez, and I am a senior at Clarksville High School. My video presentation is going to be over The Mark on the Wall by Virginia Woolf. I hope you guys enjoy. Biographical Information over Virginia Woolf. Her full name was Adeline Virginia Stephen. She was born January 25th, 1882 in London, England. She was known as a British novelist and critic. She was daughter of Leslie Stephen and she was married to Leonard Woolf in 1912. She had a total of six siblings and died March 28, 1841, Lewis, United Kingdom. Historical Information The Mark on the Wall was published in 1917. During this time, the First World War was still raging. This short story was one of the earliest of her mature and most recognizable modernist short stories. Throughout the short story, Virginia Woolf's thoughts circled around the ongoing war. The mark on the wall helps to ground her whenever her thoughts become too unpleasant. Major Works of Virginia Woolf Some of her major works included Miss Dalloway which was written in 1995. The book is a wonderful illustration of Woolf's writing style. Filting back and forth between the present and the past, as well as the thoughts of many people in Delaware's life to paint a detailed representation of both the main character and the social climate of post-World War I England. A Room of One's Own, written in 1929. This essay by Virginia Woolf was a break from her writing. Examines the place of a woman in literature, both as authors and as characters. The title, which has since has come to be known as a phrase, refers to the necessity of women to have their own place in the world of writing and making the argument that sexist society restrictions on women, access to money and political power are the reason why they lack representation in literature. To the Lighthouse written in 1927. Two of the Lighthouse is a fascinating book about the Rumsey family and their friends who are on vacation in the Rumsey summer home. It is one of Wolf's most well-known novels. Wolf plays with perspective 
envisioned to give the reader both a bird's eye view and a thorough insight of the characters of the tourist and of the region itself. The story takes place nearly entirely inside the heads of several members of the group. The Waves, written in 1931. One of Wolf's most mysterious books, The Wave features a succession of Hayes' subjective talks by its six main protagonists. There is no simple explanation for the plot or the characters in The Waves because it isn't quite fiction and not nearly poetry. And last but not least, Orlando, which was written in 1928. Orlando is a thrilling journey that follows the life of an English poet who is gender fluid from the Elizabethan era to the 20th century. Orlando is regarded as a key text in the feminist, elegant, and transgender literature. And at the time of its release, stood out for its examination of sexuality and gender norms. Summary of the Mark on the Wall The narrator is sitting in her living room after tea on an unspecific day in January, smoking a cigarette and reading. She thinks about how the fire's lighted coals make her think of a procession of nights, but she turns away from these feelings when she notices a black mark on the wall above her beautifully crafted picture. She wonders if it was placed there by a nail that one of the house's previous occupants had used to hang a toy. The narrator muses on the mystery of existence and the fallibility of thought after concluding that the mark was too large to have been caused by a nail. She makes a list of every item she has ever lost, including jewelry, bird cages, a hand organ, book binding and equipment, and other items. She regrets the wastefulness and formality and magnific magnificence of life, comparing it to a fragile and quick rat on the tooth. When the mark is realized not to be a hole, the narrator wonders if it might be a rose leaf. She thinks herself a poor housewife and likens the dust on the elegant to the dust that buried Troy. Shakespeare is pictured by the narrator sitting in an armchair in front of a fire like hers. As a tree taps on her window outside, she desires of an interrupted life. She finds her historical fiction about, about Shakespeare to be born, and she longs to come up with a lovely concept that will make her feel good about herself.
The idea for self-image occupies most of the text. The narrator wonders what would happen if this celebrated entertainer, Mira Benetton, as one consistently dresses up. The image of oneself in her mind. She speculates that future novelists will write about the beautifully crafted, though the only reflections remaining would be in heightened strangers. She also considers that the stereotypes and routines that help define other persons' existence but alter in the fall of time, which leads her to ponder about the legitimate freedoms that can develop in time. That mark extends from the wall, which makes the narrator think that it might be a note that previous dancers painted over the later show of time. She considers other marks, including the burials on the south side that retired criminals invest to gain in their capacity as antiquaries in order to gather information about earlier times in order to identify whether they belong to settlement or times. The narrator comes to the conclusion that if she stood up and pointed out the mark, nothing would change because knowledge itself is a heavy creation of one man, but are followed in the footsteps of riches and hermits. She prefers to be a future of experts where she may use her thoughts to interact with the natural world because they are similar to its own. The narrator understands that her obsession with the mark is an effort to protect herself. She is powerless to alter what occurs to her of prejudice, but she can stop unwanted ideas. In an effort to calm her mind, she starts to focus on the solid image of routine that is found outside the boundaries of human comprehension and provides a habitat for a fly, crickets, and water beetles. She considers a huge rise of the Thames with the season in its aftermath in the homes of the coastal people. The narrator is distracted from her thoughts and dragged back into the living room by her mother. Her mom approaches her and declares that he must have bought the newspaper, even though it is pointless to look up the news during the ongoing conflict. When he criticizes criticizes the smell on the wall, the narrator learns that the bricks had actually been her smell all along. That's about Virginia Woolf. Her first published piece of writing is about the Bronte sisters. Every writer must begin somewhere. In Virginia Woolf's piece, Hard Work, November 1904, which was published in The Guardian on December 21st, 1904, represented her debut into publishing industry. When Virginia Woolf eventually started writing her own novels, you can see the beginnings of her writing style that would make her famous. The intimacy of family, the significance of small personal objects, and the quiet brilliance of creative women who get by on their wits and ability. Worked as a night school teacher. Virginia was a professor at Marley College from 1906 to 1907, which provided evening lessons for working class persons looking to advance their literacy. Not only did Virginia teach throughout her life, but her lectures at the esteemed women's institution, Gritton College and Newham College would also be published as a room of one's own in 1929. She also had a love affair with her brother-in-law, 